This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. <laughs> the trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. You're listening to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Right, you can show us standing by. We'll take caller 9 844 999. Ola to play profile this in minutes. Hey, we do have your headlines on the way one hour from now. But first, a quick check into Mike Hawk for some of the stories and headlines he is not working on. All right, a guy in Washington State could face charges after he set fire to an American flag blanket over Memorial Day weekend and accidentally started a wildfire. America! Uh, Come on, man. That's not part of the plan. No, not at all. Did he do it on purpose? Yes. I'm well, assuming. Well, you know what? I don't know. I don't know why I said that. Maybe. I know you're you know. not working on the story. I, I don't That's know. the first I heard the term blanket. I thought he was just burning a flag. No, it was a blanket. It was a blanket. So, I mean, that makes you... Yeah. I still think he did it on purpose, to be honest with you. Obviously, I think so, because I just answered for the guy. There you go. It just seems odd. Like, you're out on a picnic. Who are you proving a point to? You, the wife? The bald eagle in the tree. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> to America, Ted, the it's eagle. a metaphor. The eagle. The next big food might be cockroach milk. I saw that. Cockroach I saw milk. That cockroach. All right. well, you, know well, you know, man, they're, uh, when you step on them, they, they do have that white crap that shoots out of them. Is mm. that what they're talking about? The, the milkiness? No. No, no, no you're, not, you're not working Apparently, on Apparently, there's like, I think you know there's like about, one kind of cockroach on earth that produces milk. Don't ask. I don't know. All right. So, but with that, they're like, hey, man, apparently it has like a lot more nutrients or protein. Oh. Well, it's something when you, when you step on a cockroach, it'll yeah, shoot that white, white crap milky. out of it. It's kind of like what, you know, comes out of the dandelion. Yeah, put it in your cereal. Why not? If it's got some healthier benefit, people will drink it. Let's see. Apparently, there's a Have species had, uh, of cockroaches that makes a milk that's even more nutritious than cow's milk, and there are several companies working on bringing it to the uh, to the market. Have you had oat milk yet? Oat no. Milk. I find it from to their be, oat nipples. Uh, it's it's uh, it's it's uh, oh god. Where, where do those produce milk? You know what? Here's where can what I it, find oat? It, it was, it's a European thing, but I've I've had it recently. It's kind of coming this way. It is oats, oats milk. They take oats. All right. And they soak them in water for hours and hours and hours and hours. Oh, and just hours. the starch that comes and off, they, and then they drain it, and you just drink the basic the water, and it's <laughs> freaking delicious. And I don't even like oatmeal. A new study found Drained the best starch. It really is. A new study found the best cities for basketball based on things like their number of NBA and college teams and their championships. There are definitely some ba- uh, ba- basketball towns out there. No doubt. Yep. Uh, it seems like the team, same teams play in the finals every year. <laughs> Doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, it I really have to does. put L.A. on there, even well, though the Lakers yeah. are bad now. Like, Still. But you've got UC- UCLA. You've got USC. Correct, Ted. You've got all the college aspects of it. One yeah, of them is L.A. Two NBA teams. Boston. And then Oakland. And then would you think all the okay. Lakers championships alone... Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah, they got me up there. What alcohol tastes best in a Wendy's Frosty? Ooh, ooh, uh, rum. Okay, any other guesses? Kahlua. Uh, I'll be that guy and say rum chata. A food reviewer tested a bunch of different options, and she found Kahlua and Bailey's espresso cream are the best. Well, well, it's okay. a Frosty. <laughs> whiskey and whipped cream vodka are the I worst. I thought they were talking about, like, vodka or whiskey or something that wasn't. Yeah, like, I'm know. with you. Whipped, well, cream, whi- whipped cream vodka seems like it should work. Right? You'd I think. would think so. Yeah. I guess not. One of the worst. You could study that. I'd still give it a run. <laughs> a new study found the best strategy for feeling better after a breakup is... Vigorous masturbation mm-hmm. at a bus stop. <laughs> I mean, I'm hoping it's going to be in front of a church, pizza and Miller Lite, but I'm sure it's like fruits and veggies. And Ted exercise. eating your favorite foods. Oh, nice! There you, you go. Know, I do. Yeah. I do it on like day three of a cruise because you're so far out there. They can't like kick you off the boat. Right? Apparently, it won't help you <laughs> get over around vigorously masturbating. What are they going to do? Apparently, it won't help you get over your feelings of your ex. But researchers, researchers found it will put you in a better mood overall. Yeah, you yeah. eat. You eat your favorite food. Exactly. You eat. eat happy foods. I'll just eat whatever I want. Mm-hmm. A new survey I found. Do think, I gotta say, I do think whatever, whether it's a breakup or a loss of a family member or something like that's that's always the thing. You, somebody either takes you out for that dinner or you go get. Yeah. That what do they do at funerals? I don't know. Right, what everybody world. brings food. food, but they bring s that. Look, if you invite people for July 4th, they bring you some crappy tray or something yeah. that they just didn't want to make, right? But if it's a funeral, they spend three days making the food they know you like the most. My I, buddy Joe, he died unexpectedly. We went and got chicken wings and drank Ice House. Right? Tell That's you what, what he liked. You can, eat, you can eat after someone has passed on at a funeral. Sometimes when you go through a breakup, though, it takes a couple days for your stomach to get right. Yeah, speak for yourself, fella. <laughs> some people are the opposite. You can eat? Oh, yeah. Oh, see, I can't do that. A new study found the clothes people hate the most. Uh, Caprice. 
Crocs. No, Crocs. Crocs. Crocs are third on the list. Sweaters. Leather pants and Speedos. Oh, well, I'm happy. I don't. I feel like the guy that's rocking leather pants is probably also we've wearing been, Speedos. We've already been through the leather pants discussion. It's quite simple. If you're a rock star, you can wear Carry leather on. pants. Carry if, on. If you're in a, if you ride a motorcycle and you want to wear leather pants, you can wear leather pants. However, if you're not in either one of those two uh, circles of life, you can wear leather pants. No one's saying that you can't. But what we've determined is it means you don't have any friends because if you had friends, they'd be, dude, why are you wearing leather pants? They'd shame you out of it. They would. They and really they should. Would. They should. They'd be like, I'm not going out with you tonight. Why? Because you're wearing leather pants. <laughs> This is ridiculous. People who wear glasses really are smarter, and it has to do with genetics. A new study found that people who were more intelligent were 30% more likely to also have the genes that made them need glasses. Is that still true? Because a lot of people wear frames now without lenses. Then they don't they need don't glasses, They don't need Ted. glasses. You're right, but I thought you were saying that it just said people that wear glasses are smarter. Okay. People that need glasses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah people that need glasses. I can't see cool. I'm not dumb there. <laughs> I'd rather have the vision. I just remember when I had a friend that did that. I was like, you got to so annoying. Me. Like, why yeah. are you wearing those? Mm-hmm. If they actually had to wear them, they wouldn't want to wear them. And why, what, like, like, Wobbin's got WASIC. She loves it. <laughs> oh, damn it. Yeah, but she's dumb now, too. Yeah. About 20% of people say they're afraid to take lunch breaks because they're worried their boss will think they're not a hard worker, oh. according to a new survey. You have what's called a lunch break. Mm-hmm. They might be right. 22% of bosses do think people who take lunch breaks are lazy. 98% of people think their boss sucks. So what? It's a fair <laughs> trade, right? Yep. It's a fair trade. Don't worry about it. Um, you uh, eat. Oh, my God. The majority lunch break. The majority of Americans have had a nightmare about work, according to a new survey. Sure. Yeah, the most good. common ones are having sex with a co-worker. Ah! How's that a nightmare? I guess it depends who it is. Yeah, yeah, Mike, on who Mike, it is. Come here, Ted. Mike, I thought you were a great ah! Exactly. <laughs> uh, being late and screwing up a project. Mike, have you ever had uh, dreams about having sex with uh, me, Ted, or uh, Steve? Well, not you three, no. All right. At least not individually. Okay. <laughs> On Memorial Day, a junior ROTC cadet at a Braves game stood up in the rain next to an empty seat they installed to honor POWs. Then some man walked up and ha- uh, held an umbrella over him, and now a photo of it is going viral. I saw that. It's nice. Classic touch. It is classic. A woman in New York recently gave her gynecologist a one-star Yelp review. That is very I, personal. I can't, even, I can't really even speculate <laughs> what, what that would be about. Now she, now I she's, don't want to know. <laughs> wow. Because that's clinical. You know? I mean, and, damn. Now she's wrapped up in a lawsuit because he's suing her for defamation to the tune of $1 million. I mean, do, do they give any examples of what she may have put in the review? As I really want to know. I don't know what the criteria is for a good guy in a college. She jumps up on the table, starts. he starts singing Funky Town. Right. I mean, won't you take me? How bad are you to where you get a one star at a gynecology exam? The only story I've ever heard of a bad uh, gynecologist. gynecologist. Yes, right. Was my friend said that the dude hit on her after the appointment? Oh, oh no. no! Yeah, no. Hey, baby, you look good. <laughs> I couldn't help but notice your vagina. <laughs> Golly! I'd yeah. like to be more yeah. intimate, and not so clinical. <laughs> I uh, I really just wanted to go to school and learn what my passion was for, uh, and uh, no. take that and uh, help the community as much as possible. Oh dear! There's a 114 year old man yeah, right. who's there's a 114 year old man who says he'd really like to quit smoking. <laughs> Why? Because it's unhealthy. Miles. He's 114 years old. <laughs> It'll take years <laughs> off your life. Do you realize if he quits smoking, he'll die? He doesn't even smoke regular cigarettes. What's he he rolls up his tobacco in newspaper. <laughs> Get out of here. And he smokes like, he said he smokes <laughs> three or four a day. That's not bad. In newspaper? But in newspaper? You know how harsh that is? I was, yeah. When I read that, I was like, how is he 114? Steve and I really Steve, kicked the habit. Steve and I, uh, we didn't have any rolling papers at one point in time. We didn't want to desecrate the Bible, so we actually rolled uh, the joint with the Seattle Times. It was, it was horrible. It was no, bad, man. It was harsh, man. It was what hard happens? to smoke. Oh, no. I am with you, though. I mean, you're 114. <laughs> you're smoking. Just go for it. Does it matter? Then I went down and stole some fruit out of the bowl, and we just smoked out of an apple. <laughs> You'll never believe who was masturbating at a bus stop in Florida. Ah, uh, who's oh. that? Let's say all about it one hour from now. Thank you, Mike Hawk. Headlines are coming up one hour from now. First, the game is... The Men's Room presents... Profile This. Yes, you throw Hilgen, please tell everyone how Profile This is played. I sure can, Miles. It's a simple game where we share with you a real-life news story. Something happened right here on planet Earth. Earth, Earth, Earth. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make, we'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. <laughs> Hello, Jesse. Welcome to the Men's Room. Hey, welcome to 
Welcome, guys. Hola. Hola. All right, Jesse, you understand how this here game is played? I do. All right, Mike Hawk, you'll be interested in this story as well. Police say that a man caught masturbating at a Clearwater bus stop <laughs> <laughs> told him he was Captain Kirk. Clearwater police were called to the bus stop. This happened on Monday. There's a report of what they call a lewd and lascivious act. Responding officers say they found a man sitting on a bench touching himself under his shorts. And the arrest report, police noted that it was, quote, obvious that the man was masturbating. When officers asked what he was doing, the man told them, quote, I'm scratching myself. <laughs> After the man was arrested for disorderly conduct, police asked him to identify himself. That's when the man told him his name was, quote, James Tiberius Kirk. That would be the full name of the fictional Captain Kirk from Star Trek, in case you're wondering. Police say they later discovered the man's real name, and the 56-year-old man is also facing a charge for providing a false name or identity. You believe this genius is black, white, Mexi, or Asian? Oh, uh, you said it was Florida? Yes. I'm just going to go right out and say white because I don't know too many others that will just go deep with the, the Spock. I think, I, so think, I, think, I think you're right, because Star Trek offers up a, a lot of different possibilities for representation. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So, you know, yeah. so does That's, Florida. Yes, exactly. You want to tell White final answer? We'll find out. Answer. We'll find out if he was black, white, Mexican, or Asian next. That was a tease. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. We return to the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. Profile this, believe it or not, takes us to the great state of Florida. We go to Clearwater, Florida, and a bus stop where a senior citizen was sitting there vigorously masturbating for all to see. He was arrested for disorder, uh, disorderly conduct, and when the cops asked him for some identification, name, whatever, he told them that he was, in fact, Captain James T. Kirk. He, in fact, said James Tiberius Kirk. He went Tiberius. full on, man, Tiberius. That's right. Uh, but, Jesse, we asked you, did you believe that this uh, creative man was... Black, Great white, Mexican, Mexico, you're Asian, and uh, in the end, you uh, you went white. You went with the obvious choice. Pretty much, yeah, unless you said it was war for something, you know. You, you, you <laughs> yeah. kind of got to go with the other one. Yeah, I follow you. <laughs> oh. You oh, are correct, sir. Oh, yes, sir. All right. Here we go. Now for all TV news all the time, it's time. It's TV time at And now. Because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box. I'm again. The Men's Room presents TV Time with Ted. Uh, you know, sometimes when you're working, no matter what your job is, something something unexpected happens. Mm. Right? So, I don't know. It could be a fly flies into your mouth. Happens all the time. Crazy stuff. It, yes, it could be that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Never well, know. You never know. Like for us, that'd be a big issue. Good talk. F- swallow fly. Oh, yeah. Well, it's <laughs> like for us, for sure. <laughs> He's so crazy. Yeah. So uh, what you'll listen to here is, uh, and this is out of uh, Las Vegas, okay? So they're doing, this is local news, uh, Channel 8. And basically, the cameraman is following this lady in a kayak. She's the reporter. So you'll, see, you'll hear her talking, okay? And then the cameraman will fall in the water. But he holds up the camera. And uh, I think the most interesting thing is the reaction from the crew back at work. We were talking to Captain Geo earlier. He said he's been out here for 20 years. He usually has his morning swim. Whoa. All right, folks. We just had a little water casualty, but Chris Banka, our photographer, is amazing. And we are taking him back in closer to the dock for safety. Uh, are you all right, Chris? Yeah, I'm good. He is good. He is a professional, and he is hanging on. And we can tell the bosses that no electronics or cameras were injured in this live shot. <laughs> John and Sherry and Nate. That's what happens out here live. Chris is all good, though. I promise you that. Chris. <laughs> All right, let's let's I'm glad Chris is okay. That's like, uh, I'm only laughing because I know he's alright. Wow, that was uh Oh my gosh. And he ended up with a beautiful view, is that right? The coolest shot? <laughs> like he planned it that way. That's, that's why I'm laughing. Is that he saved it. He could have gone in the yeah. So you can count on seeing this going viral all over the country and you saw it live. All right, so the crazy part about the video is that once he falls in, he's, like, at a different angle. <laughs> yeah. But he, right, it's not, like, so deep that it's over. Like, the camera doesn't go in the water. But then there's just, like, a handle or something on a boat, 
and he just shoots the rest of the video through that handle. <laughs> That's what, like, to me, was like really impressive about it. He just like zooms in through the handle. Uh, the video is up on the Andrew Facebook page. You can see for yourself what I'm talking about. That's, like, I mean, that, that's just awesome. I, at some point, he's just like, oh, screw it. I'll just go in through here. I know. And then, like before, I guess she did ask him if he was okay, but it just seemed awfully quick to be like, oh, yeah, the camera's fine. We don't have to pay for that. that like, do TV people have to pay for the cameras if they drop them? I guess so. She could point that so, out. It seemed pretty important to her to mention that immediately. Yeah. And remember, what was it, like a week or so ago when we had the lady that uh, stopped the horse yeah. with their bare hands? Even like those, uh, well, they were British, so the TV presenters. <laughs> Uh, we're like, yeah, the mic seems okay. <laughs> right. right. It's always the equipment. Right. It really what, is. what is going on out there? It's a union shop, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, obviously not. <laughs> right? they got to pay for it. Yeah. Uh, we were kind of joking about it a little earlier today. Uh, the NBA Finals are coming up, and it is the fourth straight year in a row. It's the Cleveland Cavaliers Get out of here. versus the Golden State no Warriors. No way. Uh, you what is the, you've what, been in a coma, right? What is the overall record on the series? Two to one. Yeah, two, two to one, one Golden State. Uh, two to okay. one Golden State. Okay. Right. So remember, Golden State uh, won, what was it, like three years ago, mm -hmm. and then they blew that 3-1 lead to Cleveland, That's right? right? Which was ironic, because they had just, uh, Oklahoma City had blown a 3-0 or 3-1 lead to them. Mm -hmm. So then they get in the final, blow the 3-1 lead, Cavs won one. Last year, they get KD. Golden State's back, and then this year. And it really seemed like, to me, it was not going to be those two watching the playoffs. There we are. Yes, right? Uh, game yeah. seven. Yeah. Well, it's almost like it. the NBA planned it out. I, I don't know, though. I mean, I think you, those are your biggest stars, and you want them there, but I mean, like... Maybe that's why they're your biggest stars. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean... I mean, LeBron look, James is LeBron James. But I'm just saying, like... I. I don't know for the average NBA fan. Like the playoffs are really exciting because it looked like somebody else was going to get in. Like now, I've been watching NBA playoffs. Like now that we're in the finals, I'm kind of like these two again. These yeah, two I'm again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. So we need some new blood in there. And honestly, until today, I didn't realize. I thought I thought the Celtics and Lakers had done this, but nobody's ever done it in, no. in four major sports. You had the Bills go to four Super Bowls in a row, but not playing the same opponent. But not playing the same opponent. Uh, so that's just insane. And. You know, for both teams, that's a massive accomplishment, too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you know, uh, let's just say LeBron James has been in the final, man, what is it? Seven is it, times? Is it seven or eight years in a row? It just, there's some stats. When that you is see, crazy. Yeah. It's like how dominating he is. Oh, he is. He is. He, you know, you could have the, you know, like, I, I'm with a lot of people now that are just like, look, there's Jordan. There's LeBron James. Right. But just, let's just appreciate both of them. Yeah, exactly. Like, you're, you, you get the opportunity to watch these guys play. Uh, Jordan's not playing anymore, so right. pay attention to LeBron, LeBron. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And as somebody who grew up in the era where Jordan was really good, and then he played, you know, in the town in DC for like a little bit, right? Like, if you get the chance, go see LeBron James play basketball. Right. You'll, you'll want, you'll like, remember that, right? Like to this day, I regret I never saw Jordan shoot a basket with my own eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah and you had, had the chance. That's it. That sounds like something I should say, like thirty or forty even if years it was, from now. Even I if know what the one regret yeah. was. I never saw Jordan well, it's play. It's the same thing, man. Steve and I went to a, a game. Uh, uh, it was like a. <laughs> it was a throwaway game, but the. But, the, it's, it, but it's dirty, but man. It was, it was dirty, but we're both football fans. So I the know. game we went and saw, Emmett Smith was playing for the Cardinals. That's correct. And Jerry Rice was playing for the Seahawks. But we're like, there was Emmett Smith and Jerry you Rice. You always wanted to see both those guys play. This is just not the incarnation that you thought you would see, but either way, this is better. It's like seeing Kiss than now. Not. Right, exactly. It's kind of like, well, I saw a kiss. Right, they had to make it. He has on. a Wizards jersey on, but damn it. Yeah, well, it's the same thing for me, right? Like, he, Jordan's playing for the Wizard. It wasn't a big deal, but everybody on the crew, on the night crew, we bought these tickets, and then he got injured or sick. Oh, or that's something. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we had those tickets. Uh, a lot of people, you've probably heard about the uh, Starbucks. Basically, there was an incident in Boston. So the whole company, every Starbucks in the United States, had to take off for some uh, racial sensitivity training. Uh, Daily Show and Roy Wood Jr. have some uh, thoughts on uh, how that went. Hello, Starbucks employees. I'm here today because you f***ed up. But that's fine. After today's training, those racial insensitivities will be a thing of the past. But first, a word to the black employees watching. You good, my dude. Take off. Y'all ain't got to watch none of this. It's straight. Now, for everyone else, we'll be reviewing how to handle some common scenarios that occur inside of a Starbucks. 
When an African-American customer enters your store, there's a right way to greet him and a wrong way. Here's some of the wrong ways. Yo, what's up, man? Can I get the ice oh, cold? Oh, f- he wearing a bandana. Don't kill me. Just take the money. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. We are out of great drink. Now, here's the correct way to greet a black person in your store. Hello. Let's move on. <laughs> grape drink. <laughs> right. grape I, drink. I listened to that right, this morning. Sir, we are out of grape drink. <laughs> I was like, man, I haven't thought about it in a while. He's right, though. I, I feel like I, uh, I've heard more people say that than, uh, than, than others. We're out of grape drink. <laughs> that would be uh, very aggressive. <laughs> so did you walk in? Like, are you goddamn kidding me, man? <laughs> I don't mean to offend you. I don't mean... No, seriously, you're out of grape drink? Man, I just remember, in high school, people would just walk in with gallons of just, just colored juice. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> like a gallon of it. You were rolling the Like, tub. people, like, walk around now with these big-ass bottles of water. Back oh, it, was, it was drink. Colored water drink. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't like... Uh, even the orange stuff, right? And I would call it yellow. Like, they had every color of it. Yeah, Green, something. orange, purple, blue. They had it all. Yeah. For, I... Great drink. I'm, he might be also kind of referencing the uh, uh, syrup movement a lot of times. Great oh, drink. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Could be. Sipping on that purple stuff. Uh, well, uh, yesterday we talked about it. Uh, uh, Roseanne got canceled. That was a big show if you're a conservative person. So uh, people were kind of upset about that. But the good news is Tim Allen and Last Man Standing, they're back. They got an all-new uh, season on Fox. And uh, <laughs> Tim Allen, I... Honestly, I respect what he's saying here. He's talking about on his new show, so somebody asked him if they're going to deal, and he works at a sporting goods store. Right. So the question was asked, would your character deal with guns? And he goes, yeah, quote, we're going to have to deal with that somehow. Like, uh, you know, like, I think it's kind of hard. You, you live in the United States, like he works at a sporting goods store, like the show is kind of political. It is like, yeah, they're, they're going to cover guns mm-hmm. at some point. It's, sure. it's, Why it's, wouldn't it's you? a legal thing. Right. It's, it's your right. That's the thing. It's legal. Well, you know, I've never heard like, more. Well, whatever. I mean, look, people freak out about it just because they can, but they're not listening to what anyone's saying. So it's like, don't worry about it. That's people, 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 people don't have an issue with that. Yeah. That's not that's not the issue with anybody. Nobody cares. You know, everybody's, hey, if you're a responsible gun owner, more power to you, man. Yeah, you know what I mean. Be, be represent, be, be representative, so everybody can follow that. That, that yeah. I mean, pretty basic. Uh, Walking Dead, everybody knows that. That's a massive show. Now there's some rumors that uh, Andrew Lincoln would be leaving. Uh, you remember Carl got killed off. Uh, Spoiler alert. <laughs> well, Rick Grimes, who's the dad of Carl, he might be leaving The Walking Dead too. Basically, uh, they're saying it's kind of up to the actor. It's not that like he didn't like the contract or something. I think he just went basically. He they're just kind of saying he wants to go do some other things. Sure, he wants to go be in a movie. I'm sure. I'm kind of adding that in there. Uh, but they said he'll he'll be in some episodes. The crazy thing is Norman Reedus, right? They offered him a crazy amount to stay. They want to keep him on, and they plan to make Daryl Dixon the lead character. That character was not even in the comics. Hmm. Damn. I guess he's just that popular with TV fans. Huh? Oh, Norman Reedus is. I've never watched The Walking Dead. I know exactly who that guy is, and, and everybody loves him. People love that show. People do love that show. I just think that's amazing. Good for that dude. Like, and the show's been going on long enough, so actors leave, and then it's like, yeah, you're like a side character. Now it's like, yeah, the show is all yours. Hmm. Till you get eaten. I did see one. Till you tweet something out dumb. <laughs> I, <laughs> I did see one funny tweet about the Roseanne thing. Somebody just tweeted out that they should just, like, uh, like just play out the rest of the episodes, right. and then just change it over to have the show be about Dan, and then they, you know, the husband, and then they like slowly you bring in, uh, oh, what's his name, Jeff Bridges, and then eventually it just becomes the show about the Big Lebowski. Mm-hmm. Right. Sure. <laughs> Do it over like three <laughs> seasons, <laughs> just quietly <laughs> morphing. Yeah, bring in Tom Arnold or whoever. Yeah, that was by far. That was like, all right, social media, you're still good out there, man. Like that's a, I like that concept. And the Big Lebowski, that's still a cult favorite. Sure. I will absolutely. say the older I get, the more I enjoy that movie. Sure. Like Jen. <laughs> and jazz. <laughs> Jen and jazz. And soft food. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Fallon helps us out here with some of the worst advice ever tweets. Now I thought I'd share some of my favorite worst advice ever stories from you guys. Here we go. This first one's from Matt Rowey Custard. Mm. She says, I dropped my brand new phone in the water. My dad said, just put it in the microwave for a few seconds. I had to buy a new phone. He had to buy a new microwave. <laughs> That's not good. 
This one's from at Kinky Turtle. <laughs> she says, uh, the guy at the hardware store told my friend that turpentine would remove paint from her hair. It did. It also removed her hair. Mm -hmm. What are you crying about? <laughs> the paint's gone. <laughs> Technically, it worked. This one's from at Danny Kingsley. Uh, he says, my dad told me to always fry bacon shirtless so you never get grease stains. <laughs> Third degree burns all over his stomach. No, they're not freckles. They're, they're scars. They're grease scars. <laughs> That's bad. Turpentine advice. will get those out, man. <laughs> Makes me advise it. You know my doctor, yeah, Doctor Pepper. Pepper. Right? Yeah, he told me. <laughs> This one's from at Tonio71. He says, when my wife said, don't get me anything for my birthday, my friend told me not to get her anything to prove that I'm a good listener. No. That is bad advice. That is bad oh. advice, dude. Oh, my goodness. No. This last one's from at Liz Naraki. She says, my doctor told me to go see a real doctor. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's bad advice. Hey, have the hey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like, the, I, always, I like that one about the... Uh, don't get the girlfriend or the wife anything. She said she didn't want anything. No. Oh, yeah. I'm a good listener. Yeah. I think everybody's been with that, but let me just tell you, do, do not ever listen to that advice and at least get a call. It doesn't card. matter. No, 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 no. Yeah, and and I've, I've had the individual. I should say that. On Valentine's Day, at least get a card. I've had the conversation like, why, why, why cards? We just get them and then you throw them away. We mm -hmm. should just stop giving cards. All right. Well, stop giving cards. And the next thing comes around like. You didn't get a card? No, I thought we already had the conversation. We we're going to stop giving cards. That, look, bare minimum. Yeah, you got to get a card. That's you know what? If you if it's a setup. So if that conversation ever comes up, it is a setup, and that's how Hallmark wins. Just know figure, that first. They of all. just win. It's a setup. You got to get a card. Just do that. And understand you know what I like that to do, that's though. I think the only thing that I would really like to do is to be able to go online and search for something that is appropriate, and even if it was sent to someone else, and it was like, love you, Dan. I can still send it, you know, because like, I don't know this guy, uh, but he, he's very good with words, and he seems to share my sentiment, and I'm sending this card for you. It was his birthday, but for you on Mother's Day. Like, I read what he wrote. So it's like, yeah, it's a previously it's owned, owned card. But it's, it's like, look card. what he wrote to his mother. It's very nice. That's beautiful. So really I scratched is. out Dan and, and just, just wrote me. I couldn't have said it better. Yeah. Right. And yeah. we so all we, win because <laughs> the card's recycled. We're saving the environment. And his poetry lives on forever. You know, I, because look, if you buy one of those cards that says, I love you so much, like the day that the spring mm -hmm. farts pollen, whatever. Somebody wrote that, right? Yeah. yeah. Somebody wrote, you're just stealing their words. At least I can give credit to Dan. And if, it's love card, want, enough. if it's a singing card, I don't want to be that <laughs> point, you know what I mean? So no one knows what the hell it is. Like, I just think I want to start a line of like mild love cards. Like, what does that mean? I want to get like, in your pants. But no, like, no, 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 no. The opposite. Like, here's a card. We're related. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Hope I see you. Maybe. But just sometimes, because like, sometimes they're so over the top and it's like, I don't really feel like. No, I you don't. don't. No, you, these are called like, the like, biological right. obligation cards. Here's some acknowledgments. We are related by blood, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. if it's an in law, doesn't it always say that? Please don't fly here. Right. I love yeah, it. Right? Yeah, yeah, right. Wild love cards yeah, yeah. for every holiday mm -hmm. and Valentine's Day if you're trying to get out. Just remember, four days means four days. <laughs> right. Maximum. <laughs> Mild love. It's not for everybody. Thank you, Ted. But it's the easiest. It. Headlines uh, on the way here in just a few minutes with Mike Hawk. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go. Florida man vigorously masturbating a bus job with a uh, phaser tells police that he is James T. Kirk. Meanwhile, other Florida man sees drone over his home and pulls out a 9mm with a smirk. As uh, time marches on, Pompeii continues to prove how unlucky some people were. Another Tesla crashes in autopilot as just driving would be the easy cure. And Hawaii says not safe to make s'mores over lava. It is time for your headlines. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my car. All right, our top story. Totally the first time you're hearing this today. Captain James T. Kirk found himself under police custody after he was found masturbating at a bus stop in Florida. No way! Is that wrong? <laughs> Before you get ahead of me, no, it was not William Come Shatner. On! It was... Uh, <laughs> That was busted at the bus stop, but the man did identify himself as James Tiberius Kirk when he was confronted by police. He was found at 11 in the morning, quote, vigorously stroking his penis that was under his shorts. <laughs> oh, take a look at this. He was arrested uh, for public indecency. Smooth and easy. Notice the rhythm, kids. That's right. Captain's law. Do you think... Oh. Look at these four. Oh, 69. Oh, no. yeah. 
Do you really think that he thought that he was Captain Kirk, or was he just punking the police? Nope. I think he's just that guy. All right. Officer Watch, I'll go Western Grip. <laughs> Said phasers to stun. Around the world, we go to Pompeii, where the photo of the week was taken, showing a citizen of Pompeii and just how they died. It can be concluded from the photo that a piece of volcanic rock was hurled from the mountain as it was exploding and made a direct uh, impact with the man <laughs> killing him instantly. The picture that was taken shows a perfectly preserved skeleton with the top half of the body resting underneath a huge boulder. He was the first person to be taken <laughs> yeah. out by the rock. It looks like a Halloween prop, man. That's the unfortunate part of Pompeii. That's crazy, that's the more real. they find these people, right. I mean, it's their last position. Whatever they were doing at that point in mm. time, it's, that's pretty well the end of it. It honestly... I can't get over how goofy this looks. It does, It looks silly, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, thing basically landed on his head, and there he is. How in the world the skeleton is still put together? I have no idea. It looks like a cartoon. Mm-hmm. Anywho, moving on. Is anybody else not a little disturbed that a rock can travel out fast and knock you in half? What? Believe it or not, what they I think, think he's happened, still under there, Ted. They believe it's a door jam, a massive door jam. Oh. So when the volcano is oh, erupting, this thing fell. toppled. It fell on top. It didn't blow out of the volcano. They believe it. Oh yeah, no. That, it rolled. Either way, he's unfortunate. Yeah. And the way they found him. Now, but here's the bright side, and I think you'll agree with this, Mike. So he looks ridiculous. Yes. He's been there for 2,000 years, and clearly he went out like a like a Warner Brothers cartoon character. Yes, you really did. That said, unlike most people from Pompeii, he will be immortalized forever now. They also said <laughs> right? you know, I'm I mean, sure he's he going to be a meme forever. Absolutely. They also think that but he might have been it might have been hard for him because his legs might not have been working based on the skeletal remains. So they, they think he like he was like... <sighs> Kind of dragging, him, dragging himself around anyway. Oh my god! Yeah, it was worse. It's like it's just like the, it's just, yeah. It's just like leave me alone under this. Why do I feel? Like, oh man! <laughs> like Why do I have to be humiliated? <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> hundreds of years. Damn, man. come on, man. Sakes. You know what I mean? In other news, an invasion of privacy led to shots fired in Florida as a man was defending his property. <laughs> The story goes. Yeah. There it is. The story goes that the man saw a drone flying over his property, coming low to a couple feet above the ground before shooting back up into the sky yeah. and hovering yeah. around the property. Sweet home, Alabama. <laughs> After that, well, the skies are blue. Give me back my bullets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After waving for the pilot to take the drone away from his home for fear of them trying to fill the sick it makes no sense to me. Yeah. The only thing he knows how to do in sign language is get. <laughs> he took more drastic measures and fired his 9mm handgun at the device. It's a Saturday night special. <laughs> Getting off seven rounds before eventually calling police. The operator told police that he didn't know that the device was being shot at and also denies flying over the man's property. Man was yeah. He was told to not fire a weapon at drones again and was left with a warning. Tuesday's gone, so is that drone. <laughs> God. Hold on, let me get. I'd do it. It'd be a better shot than he would. <laughs> Tesla's autopilot mode seems to be getting uh, people in trouble more often than Drive not. Drive your car! This one decided to skip the legal procedure and Jesus just hit a police Christ, officer man. outright. If you don't want someone to drive, if you don't want to drive, get Uber. This right. is very simple. <laughs> this is very easy. All of the stuff we're taking so care of. This is so easy. Someone else can drive a car. But now you don't have to pay for Uber, Miles. You uh, just yeah, hit the yeah, autopilot. Yeah, guess what? I hope well, you can I'm pay for a cop car. I hope the bad things happen to you. <laughs> I hope that the Darwin steps in. <laughs> While the car was in autopilot mode, it managed to collide with a police cruiser. The cruiser was totaled, but go. luckily unoccupied and parked. Yeah, well, he's You know what the that. thing about autopilot is? If you tell someone, oh, man, I was an autopilot today. Yeah. It's not a good thing. No, no, it just means you're not putting up any effort. <laughs> it's like right. when you're on the plane and you exactly. see the pilot walk back to take a dump, and you wonder, "Hey, <laughs> if we hit turbulence, who's flying this plane?" You go, "Oh, don't worry about it. Probably on autopilot. We're all good." <laughs> right? Yeah, right. Yeah, the pilot's everybody. just there for the takeoff and the landing. Yeah, yeah. he's like it's a closer part-time. at the baseball game. I can fly the plane. It's the takeoff and the landing yeah. Yeah. that are different. I can if you sit up get there it up in the air, air. Yeah. Okay. no pleasing you guys. A man in Florida has filed a lawsuit against McDonald's because they've been charging him too much for sandwiches. The man, the man has been buying quarter pounders without cheese for years yeah. and has just noticed that they continue to charge him the full price of the quarter pounder with cheese. We, we brought you we that story about- on the last episode, but it was a future repeat, and you weren't here. You were actually on vacation when we oh. did that show, which was months ago, so you didn't know that. But gotcha. yeah, I would not try to sue them, but I agree with this point. Because he said, look, man, if you add cheese, you charge right. them. So- yeah. So you're all well aware that he's trying to sue him for $5 million. Well, if you can, yeah, I'm if not you sure can, how he arrived at that you can, you can get a sausage biscuit in the morning. It's like 99 cents, whatever. It's right. $1.29. If you add cheese, it's more. Right. 
Yeah, I fully get his point. You just said the $5 million. The $5 million. million. Mm-hmm. Like, come on, man. Well, you, I don't even need to eat. The U.S. Geological Survey has just put out a PSA that you wouldn't think that they'd have to say. After being asked a question, the organization felt it necessary to advise people against roasting marshmallows over the lava that is pouring across Hawaii. Uh, I go straight steak, man. You just put a steak over the lava? Oh, yeah, man. You ever see when they would cook a steak right on the coals? Just, just throw it, it right just, inside. Yeah, just throw lava it on steak. Yeah. I mean, I get why they had to say that. I don't. Thank you. Ted, you try If it. they're adults, I don't. If they're kids, I go, hey, man. If they're adults, you go, look, man. They know this. This this is their decision. Darwin had a point. Let's see what happened. The man asked yeah. if it would render the marshmallows inedible because of gases being released from the lava, and the organization clarified that it shouldn't be attempted at all. To be honest, if I were to do it, I would just be doing it for a photo op. Right. Yeah. Am I going to get toxic marshmallow? They said something like, I did forgot where it was in the story. They said something <laughs> like, there's certain gases that actually are being emitted Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Boy, you know what I do? You know what I do? Blindness. I take all the things that I wasn't supposed to be able to throw away anywhere else and throw them Oh, the yeah. I take old cans of paint. Hey, batteries. batteries. Hell, yeah. You know, That's it for headlines with that. Mike Hawk is out. <laughs> hey, sir, we appreciate it. We'll see you next time for the return of Big Dummy, the head chef in the house with Ted's meat and potatoes. No way. Sherlock profile this, and we'll drink a toast with a shot of the day. He said a lot of stuff. I don't know if any of it's true. Meanwhile, we be all about this bitch. So until tomorrow, do what you do best. And for Aletha's sake, stay beautiful.